Welcome home. It's Irish Family History with curious news and notes, celebrating our fourth year of this podcast at the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. One of six broadcast series from the head school at irishroots.com. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, publisher of rare Irish books and uh, information on every county in Ireland since 1978. Be sure to read our blog, complete with links to click on from this podcast, and search our master index and books for free. Molly, wet the tea, Katie, bar the door, Sweeney, clear that floor, and bring out the Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. Well, it is show number 165, and uh, we've got some things, some really good things for you today. Uh, It's been a while. We just had a little two-week vacation, and that doesn't happen often. Matter of fact, over the last six years, we've been doing this podcast very seldom. Uh, We may have to start doing that every year or so. Uh, But among today's topics at the Hedge School, the family name of the day is Burke. The Irish county of the month is Galway. Searching for Caldwell, Cunningham, Flanagan, Peyton, and Leonard. And curious news, Irish matchmaking in County Clare. Uh, The video of the month is is about a boatman and a woman he's in love with, I think, and he's trying to talk her into something. And uh, the curious note is outboard bathtub for Mervyn. And the one-minute podcast, The Old Clatta Ring. And that's from County Galway, too. So we've got a Galway emphasis. Hey, that reminds me to have you listen to all of our podcasts. We've got... uh, We've got three types of podcasts. Some of them are free. Some of them are archived for a small fee if you're a member. And some of them we just have up there for a fee. Uh, but we also have six or seven podcast feeds. Right now we've got uh, this one going on here, the Irish Family uh, History and Genealogy Podcast. And uh, we also have the Irish in America Podcast just finishing up this week, uh, this season that is. And then we have the... Uh, Uh, Irish Song and Recitation Podcast, which is just getting ready to go on. We're still recording some shows on that, so if you want to sing your song, uh, just let me know and we'll get you on the air. Uh, Notes for the week, we're finishing up those song recordings, like I said, and you've got a week or so, so uh, I might be making my debut this this year too. So people are saying, once you see him do it, you'll have no fear about doing it yourself. And I'll leave you to interpret that for yourselves. Uh, number two, we're slowly expanding some of the web pages, including Top 50 Irish Links, DNA, and Irish Song. Watch for it. Uh, number three, for the first time ever, we're having a professional photographer friend come in and do a f- few shots of us for use on the web page and for PR. And she said there was nothing she could do about the age of the subject, but she said she could at least make it fun and maybe even meaningful. We'll have to see about that, but that should be fun. Gosh, you know, you think somebody's written 60 books and the first Irish podcast on Irish families and all those other things. You think I would have had a, fo- a photograph, a phot- photographic shoot by now, but I'm just learning how to say the word. <laughs> Well, let's see. We've got the one-minute podcast. I'm going to have to think on my uh, feet today because I don't have it done yet. But one of the podcasts on the Irish Sun podcast is going to be the uh, the old Clatta Ring. And uh, the village of Clatta, of course, was in Galway. So it fits in perfectly with uh, today's broadcast. So we're going to... Uh, we're going to act like I'm playing that podcast right now, even though I won't record it till probably next week. And that uh, that song goes something like, uh, The old clattering belonged to my grandmother. She wore it a lifetime, then gave it to me. On her worn finger, she wore it so proudly. "'Twas made where the clatter rolled down to the sea. "'The things it could tell us 
of sorrow and hardship and of the grand happy days when the whole world would sing so it's away with your sorrow you'll be in luck tomorrow for everyone loves it the old clattering now we've got two more verses to it but you'll have to turn into the irish song podcast if you ever want to hear those sung like that and of course uh, you may not actually, uh, but that's just a little sample of the Irish Song and Recitation uh, Festival competition that's coming up. I'm entering a couple songs myself just to get it going, and we've got uh, we've got one call in already from Ireland uh, with a couple of entries, and we've got a few entries from around the United States. So it should be fun, and uh, we might learn a thing or two about Irish song before it's all done. Uh, a lot of what we're doing, it's supposed to be the old style. Uh, Shan knows singing, so I tried to give you a little idea. There might be something different about it. And, of course, it's old style, and it's usually unaccompanied. And, uh, hey, it's also, originally, it was all in the Irish language. Now, that sample I gave you there was in the English language, and it's sort of Shan knows, but uh, we'll have to talk more about that later. Turn into that, the Irish Song and Recitation Festival podcast. I think you're going to enjoy it. We're going to have some fun here in the coming weeks uh, uh, with some difference and new singers. So remember, you're invited too. We've still got one more week left to record. Uh, so if you've got a song in your heart, sing it on in. Hey, now what do we got here? The book of the month. You know, we publish more Irish genealogy books than anyone in the world, at least of the type that we do. And that's Irish, of course. And the three book books of the month that you should have on County Galway, just for starters, one is Families of County Galway, Ireland. That's a hardbound book, and it's got the histories of the families uh, all from County Galway. And it, they're in addition to the history that is in the Book of Irish Families, Great and Small. It's a supplementary volume. Number two, County Galway, Ireland, Ireland Genealogy and Family History Notes. That's our small sp spiral bound book that's sort of a primer and introduction to genealogy records and sources and and we have some family histories in there, but not as much as in the big book. Uh, number three, The History of Galway by Hardiman. I had to include that. That's one of my favorites when I go looking for, for starting up to look into the history of Galway. That was just a really good book. So I'm recommending it. It's not my publication, but it's so good. Uh, now we're going to take some extracts from, uh, from that Families of County Galway, Ireland that I wrote a few years back. And, of course, we open up and we say, well, it's easiest to start the history of Galway here for our purposes with Irish families and genealogy. We short, sort of started after the Norman invasion of Ireland in the 12th century. That was a time of great change for Ireland uh, with the invasion and the battles. And the, the people of Galway weren't immediately affected, you know, because they were on the West Coast and sort of protected and sort of, sort of in the backwoods as far as the Normans were concerned. And it took a while before foreign troops actually got to set foot in Galway and bother those nice Galway folks. In 1171, Strongbow landed in Waterford, but it wasn't until 1178 that the English first set hostile foot in the province of Connacht. And that incursion was successfully repulsed, however. So uh, they didn't just run over the Galway fo folks, no, no. And the town of Galway by that time had been rebuilt, and it was increasingly necessary to control the town of Galway in order to rule the province of Connacht. And centuries of conflict would follow as a result, uh, especially all the way down to that 17th century that we've talked about before. And the town of Galway would often stand against the rest of the county even. And you're going to find Burke and Flaherty and O'Brien in either allied or opposed to each other and the de burgos of course the de burgos that's the burks the birminghams the o'connors the kellings kellys and even the o'briens of claire got called up to help now and then hey you know what we've got three things to remember and that's that we've got a podcast that you're listening to right now if you're hearing my voice we've got a blog reader which is a, a computer reading the blog. And then we've got the blog itself, and each one contains something a little bit different most of the time, so you might want to check those out. Hey, coming up, one of the bulletins for the day, 
Did you know the Middle Eastern Coptic Church was in Ireland and how far back that goes? They just dug some information up on that. Now it's time to raise our eyes skyward, give thanks, and ask for help. Here are today's Magnificent Seven. Number one, Miriam Kerrigan of Melbourne, Florida. Your Surnames of Ireland book has shipped. Teresa Caldwell of Long Valley, New Jersey, welcome as a new member. Uh, she's searching for William Caldwell, born 1815 in Ireland and married Eliza somebody. Uh, and they've got one daughter, Mary, uh, born in Ireland and... Uh, then they've got Nova Scotia comes into the picture and then Philadelphia. And uh, she wants some more information. So if anybody else there can help, kick it on in. And number three, Margaret Kerr of Lannan, uh, Wisconsin. Welcome as a new member. Number four, Patty Wilcox of Grants Pass, Oregon. Welcome as a new member. Searching for Patrick Cunningham, born 1837, County Down to Richmond, Mass. Number five, welcome new member Gene Johnson of Sandy, Utah, searching the Irish names of Flanagan and Peyton and looking for uh, uh, the stories to pass on. Number six, welcome new member Edward Leonard of Jenkintown, Pennsylvania, searching for Michael Leonard, who came to Ulster County, New York, shortly before 1850. Where do you live in Ireland? And Patrick Lynch of Dublin, your county Tyrone genealogy has shipped. Hey, that reminds me to say thank you to each and every one of our members. Whether you're a full-fledged member, you're helping me out that way, or if you're buying one of the books, we sure appreciate it because uh, you keep the podcast coming, you keep the web page up and developing, and uh, sponsors are needed and welcome. And consider yourself a sponsor if you're uh, if you're a member, especially. Hey, and coming up also another story: the first Irish women woman ever to swim. To swim what? We'll find out about that. Now we've got coming up the Irish family name of the day, and that's Burke. And that fits because Burke was big in Galway. Eh, they were big in Mayo. They were big in several places. But today's family history is in honor of members Joseph R. Burke of Odenton, Missouri, looking for Burke of Belenisloe County, Galway, and Mary Moffat of Bozeman, Montana. Looking for James Paul Burke, who was born 1887 in Kansas City, Missouri. Now, there's all kinds of ways to spell that name. I've got it listed on the blog. It can be B-U-R-K-E, like our member today. It can be B-O-U-R-K, or you can put an E on the end of that. You can even find a name like Burkett that has been shortened to Burke sometimes. And De Burgo is the old spelling of the name. And that's got, uh, well, at least two variant spelling groups from the Guide to the Various Spellings of Irish Family Names. Link on the blog, number 192 and number 1193. No, one, number 192 and number 193. Uh, the history of the name, it's a very numerous name. It's one of the 20 most numerous in Ireland. And I tell you what, there's a lot of Burks in America and Canada, too. And it was one of the most common names that arrived in Ireland as a result of those Norman invasions that we talked about earlier. And the earliest and most noted of those families, they descend from William de Burgo, who took the place of Strongbow as the chief governor of Ireland. He's often referred to as William the Conqueror by writers. And by 1179, large portions of land were granted to the de Burgos, or the Burks, in the province of Connaught. And they became more Irish than the Irish themselves, adopting the Irish way of life in full. They had chief styled and the Irish fashioned, and uh, they observed the ways of the Brehan Law. Very interesting. And Galway, Cork, and Dublin were centers for the name for, uh, for centuries, really. And a century ago, the spelling of B-O-U-R-K-E was centered in Tipperary, Limerick, and Mayo. So, boy, what a thing it is to know all that. And there's a lot more to go. There's There's been several books work written on uh, Burke. And, of course, uh, Histories of Galway are going to include a lot on Burke. The same thing with Mayo and some of the other areas. Uh, but now we have to take a look at the Irish family coats of arms from the Irish Book of Arms. And that's coming up in just a second. Oh, yes, we've got several uh, arms in the Irish Book of Arms in color and in black and white, uh, as you might expect with such a popular name and such a powerful name that invaded into Ireland way back there in the 12th. 
Now you're going to find several names if you do a search in our free master online index at irishroots.com. You're going to, in the Irish Book of Arms, you're going to find Vader and Shan Shannon and Tibbet and Richard and Pat and a lot of first names that go along there with the Burke families. And in the Ar Book of Arms itself, it shows uh, uh, Bernard and McDavy Burke and Redmond Burke. And it also shows several illustrations of the coat of arms and the, uh, uh, the little representation above it, the crest and... Uh, you're going to find those of Burke of Elm Hall and those of Peter Burke from the end of the 19th century as two examples. Uh, you're going to find a cross is featured very prominently on that coat of arms for the Irish Burks, and it also has two lions, and you'll usually find a motto beneath the uh, coat of arms there too. Very important for family members to check that out, don't you know? And hey, guess what? Coming up later in this episode, we're going to talk about the story of the Cape Breton Irish. Uh, and it's a video, actually. There's a seven or eight parts, I think. But this is a link to the first part, and you can just go on and watch the rest of them. But somebody did a lot of work for this, so it's worth watching. Hey, now it's time for, I hear that, it's time for... Around the World in Irish Ways, the web page and video of the month. Oh gosh, we're going to have four selections today. Uh, you can click on our web page to get to these all. Get to all of these. Number one, we've got the Galway theme going with the Galway Ireland travel guide video. Just click on that and go. Number two, we got a uh, we've got a really neat upgraded song, sort of a modern version of the Shan Nos, and uh, it's got a response with the several people in the doing the chorus and. Uh, it's really a pretty moving little sound, so you got to listen to it. And uh, number three, the story of the Irish in Cape Breton. That's what I told you. That's on the video. And number four, uh, the Burke family genealogy page. That's just one example of the many Burke resources there out on the web. And uh, let me see. Did I have anything else? Uh, oh, we did have several examples uh, of books that had Burke, like Castle Burke is in the County Mayo Genealogy and Family History Notes book. And Burke of Cahir Moyle in the Families of County Limerick book. Uh, James Burke, captain of the ship Neptune in the Journal of the American Irish Historical Society. Uh, Ulick Burke in King James Irish Army List. Uh, uh, Burke and de Burgh and Burke of Clan Ricard in the Tribes and Customs of High Minnie by O'Donovan. And uh, Redmond Burke in the Irish Book of Arms. And if you read a little bit of Irish history over there on the West Coast, you're going to find that name Redmond Burke more than once uh so that's real interesting now what do we have coming up next uh we've got burke we got galway we talked about clada the little village of clada which we ought to spend some time on one show talking about that but those people had their own ways in their own little area and they had their own little king of clada you know sort of like the king of the carry patch in some parts of america <laughs> Sure now, don't you know it's time for curious news and notes from Ireland today. Number one, an enclosed order of contemplative nuns is offering a sample of the contemplative way of life for a monastic experience we experience weekend. And that's going to happen in County Carlow, Ireland, and it's probably happening right now. Remember those things like obedience, poverty, chastity, and enclosure. You know, that could help quite a few people. Just a weekend or two doing it on your own might uh, might make your thinking a little clearer. What do you think, huh? Sign up in County Carlo if you're thinking of maybe joining the order. Number two, link on the blog for a more story. Number two, a 1,200-year-old manuscript in County Tipperary has linked the Christian church in Ireland at that time to the Middle Eastern Coptic church. And apparently this leaves a lot of people a little surprised, so... More on that story on the blog. Just click on the link. Uh, number three, Willie Daly. He's a surviving matchmaker in Clare. There's not that many of them left. And no, he's not making matches so you can light your barbecues and your cigarettes and your pipes. He's a matchmaker where he sets people up to get married, you know. He sort of makes the match. And he's uh, interviewed as the Lisdoon Varna Matchmaking Festival uh, 
begins or is going on in Claire right about now. Uh, more on the blog. Number four, a meteorite lands and hides in Ireland. And that just happened this last Wednesday. Uh, they say if you find it, it hit. they think it hit the ground in Ireland. It's worth its weight in gold. Now, wouldn't that be nice? I'd be out there with my metal detector uh, hunting for that. It's probably sitting in some bog somewhere. Or maybe it's outside a pub. Or maybe it's one of one of the little ditches next to the road. I'd be looking. Number five, Anne Marie Ward is the uh, first Irish woman. She's the first Irish woman to swim the North Channel, and it took her nearly 19 hours. Uh, check it out on the blog. We've got the story in the Irish Times. That's a heck of a swim. And how could it take this long for, for, a, for a lady to have done that? It's about time. Congratulations to Anne. And number six, Mervyn uh, Kenkeed, he rub-a-dub-dub. He crossed it all in a motorized tub. The, this 65-year-old from Lisburn was the first to cross the Irish Sea in such a vehicle, and that would be a bathtub with a motor hooked up to it. Pretty amazing. They got an illustration, a picture of it, and uh, the story uh, off the BBC. I got a link on the blog. That's a real funny one. And number seven, there's a French celebrity that was noted... Uh, for opening up a famine soup kitchen in Ireland back there during the famine. And uh, they lined him up and they, they put him in a zigzag pattern to go in and set up. They gave him six minutes to eat their, this great meal that he said they'd have. And they had a grand celebration and grand opening because they thought this was the answer to the Irish famine. But as it turned out, the food is described as a worthless mass of roots and warm water. So the plans of the great French chef didn't work out. More about it on the blog. Click it and read. So in the notes for today. That's all for today, folks. Joseph, warm up those pipes. Remember, we have a broadcast series on Irish song and recitation, on local history of the Irish in America, and on 2,000 years of Irish history, as well as on the counties, and something special coming up on Irish language, I hope. Uh, we've got all that and more at our head school at irishroots.com. And you know, we've been known to appear, exhibit, teach, and even sing for your special events. Be sure to book in advance if it's important. And write me at my American address at Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave a message by phone at 816-256-3360. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com. Skype me at the Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, get me on MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, and Irish Central. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. <laughs>